An ABC News exclusive, the hidden tapes from the Kennedy presidency. As we know, John F. Kennedy loved raw history, and he installed a microphone right there in that famous Oval Office desk, and there was another one there in that coffee table in front of him. The result, a portrait on tape of a fully human president questioning in crisis, often exhausted, frustrated, then laughing. And there is a new book out tomorrow, listening in. It contains transcripts and a CD of the recordings, and it has an introduction by his daughter, Caroline Kennedy, who sat down with us. You are there, inside a presidential life, 265 hours of secret audio tapes. And listening to them all these years later, a little girl, all grown up, who lost her father when she was almost six. I remember really clearly being under the desk and making necklaces and trying to get candy from, from the grown-ups who were around. But <laughs> Caroline Kennedy says it's wonderful today to hear him laughing when she walks in demanding attention. That sound is little John pounding under the desk. No idea he's hitting a microphone. Her father is relaxed. It was really like being in his company f while you're listening, and so I think that that was really a wonderful feeling for me. And what you hear on the tape is a man impossibly calm in crisis. Intelligence has discovered the Soviets placed nuclear missiles inside Cuba aimed at the U.S. How far advanced is this? Uh, sir, we've never seen this kind of an installation before. Even in the Soviet Union? No, sir. It's bound to be a reprisal the Soviet Union. They're always there. But however calm and steady in the Cuban Missile Crisis, he could unleash irritation on small things. Here, a Defense Department official spent a lot of money on furniture for a pregnant Mrs. Kennedy if she went into labor, and he's furious. I want to find out if we pay for that furniture. All right, sir. Then I want that fellow's incompetent who had his picture taken next to Mrs. Kennedy's bed, if that's what it is. I mean, he's a silly man. I wouldn't have him running a cat house. But nowhere are the tapes more moving and revealing than as the secret witness to the struggle for civil rights, the great moral issue tearing the country apart. And after a young man named James Meredith creates a crisis by enrolling in the all-white University of Mississippi, James Meredith was inspired by my father's inaugural address and decided then that he wanted to enter uh, the University of Mississippi. And so then this whole drama unfolded. This is the president taking on the staunch segregationist, the governor of Mississippi, Ross Barnett, who wanted to eject Meredith into an angry mob. President, please, why don't you, uh, can't you give an order to try to remove Meredith? How can I remove him, Governor, when there's a, a riot in the street and he may step out of that building and something happened to him? I can't remove him under those conditions. Mr. President, I took an oath in order to buy to the laws of this state. And you know what our laws are with reference to this. Right. Well, of course, the, the problem is, Governor, that uh, I got my responsibility just like you have yours. Kennedy sent in the U.S. Marshals and the National Guard to restore order and James Meredith became the first black graduate of Ole Miss. But in the months ahead across the South, the flames, the dogs, the riots, and all the troubles closing in, threatening his second term. It is his last November. The president sounds exhausted. Politically, the news is uh, somewhat uh, disturbing. A little boy climbs into his lap. Hello. Naughty, naughty. Why do the leaves fall? Well, where do we go to the Cape and it's for It's summer. <laughs> then 11 days before he's assassinated. Tuesday, November 12th. The last words on the last tape are about the hard battle ahead. So that our lot becomes more difficult. Our lot becomes more difficult. And that's it. Last words. I love that. I think that's really, and I thought it was really moving. And obviously, knowing what happened, he understood how difficult all of this really was. John Kennedy had once told his friends, life is a struggle. And to be president is getting to struggle in a tremendous sort of arena.
that's what the presidency is. Right. But that's great. And you're, you know, and you're hopefully making things better. So I think that that's really probably the most kind of rewarding life you could have. And so I think he, he did that. 